Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Into the Studio. You know who we are and what we do. Hopefully, if you don't, I'm Nylon. I'm Matt. And we talk to queer people. <laughs> Um, I would hope so. <laughs> yeah. Today we have Grace Baldridge, also known um, under the artist name Simlar. Um, I just want to bring up one thing. They have a November birthday. I got excited, right? But I lied because that excitement actually turned quickly into rage or mortal enemy enemies because November Sags and November Scorpios do get out at the um, birthday slash Christmas holiday party every year. So actually, the lower half of this um, episode is me and Grace, like fist fighting. <laughs> uh, anyway, Ryan found it. <laughs> you say fist fighting, and it was just brought up to that uh, time where I, oh my god, Jake, <laughs> no, Jake or Logan Paul, I don't care about these white men, but like the when they tried to like have a boxing match with someone. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, nylon and and similar boxing match win. Anyway, our our this is I think the first guest we have that uses any pronouns. Um, people Ooh. mostly use she they. You also see she they a lot on the wiki. I will be spicing it up a little bit, throwing some he hims, some um, possibly neo pronouns. Who knows? Speaking of neo pronouns, do you have favorite neo pronouns? No, but oh. I do have neo pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> that would be your favorite neo pronouns. Would it's you like not to share my the, favorite. Share them with the class. <laughs> I got sick of neo pronoun discourse on social media, so I really just kind of picked out some neo pronouns I thought were cool. So uh, they are uh, ghost poison. So ghost self poison self. Because I was like, why are people judging everyone <laughs> for neo pronouns? Like, f- like I'm just gonna use mine. Like, I mean, mm. they are my all my pronouns, and y'all can fight me. Fun fact, uh, Matt is a Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> um, my favorite right now are Z's or Zim, which are adapted from the German Z, S-I-E. Um, at least that's what I was told, right? But me, I don't know it means, anything in German. It, I, I'm learning German right now, right? <laughs> Back at it again. Uh, it means you when it's capitalized, and it means singular she and plural they. Uh, but yeah, learn German, right? Um, my pronouns in German are actually the he or neuter pronouns, as and er. But don't don't fight me about my pronunciation. Leave me alone. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know about the whole non-binary scene in Germany. So, like, if you guys have cool pronouns, like, literally tell me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm... I don't think I know a German person. <laughs> <laughs> like, at all. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Pronouns aside, grace, or similar, if we're going by the artist name, um, I know literally last episode we spoke with Ellie and we were like, uh, new year, new us, right? Not going to talk to queer musicians anymore. We lied. They're still on the rod- roster. <laughs> um, but you know, it's unfortunate, right? We just said we were going to go to like away from musicians and here we are with like a cooler musician. <laughs> anyway, a little intro to Grace. Grace is a musician, releases music under their middle name, similar, and actually do that. I, whatever the wiki said, it was like a maternal tie to like their family. But uh, actually, like this middle name similar has allowed them to experience, allows their listeners to experience their music from a less gendered point of view. So like if you like, if she was releasing music under Grace, you'd be like, ah, a woman wrote this, obviously. But like similar is pretty like neutral, right? Which allows like um, more nuance. Yes. Yes. More nuance. Would you like to talk about their new album, Late Bloomer? Yeah. So... Right now, they're pushing their album Late Bloomer, Mm -hmm. um, which has about six songs on it. Um, And so we'll we'll get more into the music as we do later on. (laughs) But um, so basically, okay. Basically, it's go listen to Late Bloomer. (laughs) Do it. Stream it right now. But a little bit about Grace first is that they are actually a Christian singer and their father is a priest, which is, you know, quirky grace was born in delaware and uh, around third grade they all moved to waterloo belgium until grace came back to the u.s for college which i that's think that's a is, journey yeah i just think that's nuts right um fun facts right um grace has actually also acted in slash hosted quite a few things as well so we're getting into like the actor artist territory grace is a regular host of this new uh commentary show i think it was uh on youtube called the young turks Mm -hmm. co-host of the former uh the young turks network show pop trigger 
which is fun. Graphics insert here, right? <laughs> and they also created and host a the Young Turks Associated YouTube series, mm -hmm. uh, Murder with Friends, which was nominated for Best Nonfiction Series in the seventh Streaming Awards in 2017. Super fun. That one sounds fun. Just Murder with Friends. <laughs> yeah. They also hosted a documentary series called State of Grace, which is about being LGBTQ and Christian. And the first episode is called right, Life Threatening Dangers of Gay Conversion Therapy and was nominated at the 31st Glad Media Awards for the Outstanding Journalism Multimedia Award. I also think it's such a fun play on words, like the uh, state of gray. <laughs> I mean, yes. I love that so much. I am very happy that Grace is touching upon like religious trauma as a queer musician because mm -hmm. that is great. Yes. And we mentioned this in the interview, so stay tuned, right? Um, but back to Preacher's Kid. Yeah. February 2021, Grace released Preacher's Kid. As an EP. Which, by the way, means extended play. I did not find this out until right now. Not right now, but... What do you think but... EP and LP stand for? I don't know. No, <laughs> no one would... You look, what does EP mean, music? Nothing comes up. But, like, Grace's Wikipedia had me covered. <laughs> <laughs> I like how I looked straight into the camera like I was an episode in The Office. Um, anyway. <laughs> so anyway, yes. So February 2021, Preacher's Kid was released. And the way that I heard of this album was because it went viral on TikTok because Grace had done like almost like a social media um what's the word i'm thinking of social media propaganda is not oh the right God. word. Probably an event. Yes. A what? <laughs> A social media campaign ah. to get to as high as to the possible as high as they possibly could on the Christian charts because you don't see a queer artist in the Christian charts because usually Christians are like hey I hate the queers so <laughs> anyway this campaign ended up them uh, ended okay so year of its release this campaign right uh, Grace ended up getting his song up to the number one spot on iTunes as a Christian album or like obviously as an EP which that's exciting, right? Number one spot. Um, and in total, there's uh, eight songs. All of them kind of come back to the idea around being a queer Christian. There's a total of 20-ish minutes listening time. One of them is actually not a song. Uh, it's actually a voice clip. It's like 10 seconds long. Um, it's called Queer Content for Your Consideration from Ariane. And it literally just says, very, very queer content for your consideration. If you haven't already, it's on Netflix. I think it's called Blow Her Mouth. Anyway, it's... Anyway, but it's good. It's got a storyline, but it's all very sexual. <laughs> it yes. was just really funny for me. Like halfway through the EP, it's like a little voice memo. You know what I mean? Always. Um, but we have Bethlehem, Jesus in Texas, Chicken Youth Group Posture, parentheses, and Elude, A Good Man, and A Promised Land outro. So let's uh, dive into Bethlehem. So... <laughs> I can't try to read your grammar. <laughs> I I know how to read my grammar. I'm very excited about this episode, so I wrote, I wrote, I wrote a lot, <laughs> as always. Um, it's straight up like, oh, I've seen a lot in my life, and I, and what I wouldn't give to be accepted by God. That's kind of like this one's about, right? It's like just a big queer feeling, <laughs> especially when you're raised in like a super conservative family or like a southern family. Um, feeling unaccepted by God is like a given most of the time. The song kind of outlines that feeling as well as addresses the corruption that is common in a lot of churches, mentioning fame, hungry pastures, making bank in Hollywood. And like the lyric, it's a long passage, but like I'm not gonna read the whole thing. It opens up with, it's like, uh, oh, what I'd give for just an inch of your peace because I want to fall, but I've got bruises on my knees. What I wouldn't give for an inch of your peace because I want to fall. I want to be someone you'd that you'd call. Um, and my dad never cursed in his life. I asked if he smoked. He said twice. Well, by that standard, I am a failure. I passed once all. I passed once the day I married my wife, right? But just like a reminder, like I'm still a child of God, right? Like later on in the song. I just really like this song. <laughs> this one was a strong opening for a preacher's kid. So the second song that we're going to look into is Jesus from Texas, which is a very big, like, um, basically a growing up as a queer child like reclaiming what being raised christian meant for you and like reclaiming that in a way that feels comfortable to you um because like growing up personally growing up 
Christian. I'm no longer Christian, but I received a lot of hate from the Christian community that is like anti-LGBT, transphobic, all that good Mm -hmm. juice or bad juice. (laughs) The bad juice. (laughs) Do not drink the bad juice. But (laughs) communion crackers have gone stale. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I'm hilarious. <laughs> um. So queer reclamation of like Christianity and God and whatever else relies in Christianity. The opening line says that Grace's mom was literally there for Stonewall, and that she was 18 when I it should happened. specify not actually there at the riots, but like 18 at the time that they were happening. So yeah, like... yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> alive and uh, was sentient during the <laughs> sentient. time. But yeah, so their mom was 18 when it happened, but she didn't remember it. So she should have, like, expected that more queer people would come out after, you know, the Stonewall riots. But, Mm -hmm. of course, like, we know how that history ended up um, and how there's such a rampant time of homophobia in, like, the Bible Belt (laughs) and, like, (laughs) homophobia. But, yeah. But uh, homophobia and, like, the Bible Belt or, like, just various parts that are not, like, New York City and LA <laughs> and like New Orleans. Yeah, and I like the way this line is put together for the opening. It's like my mom turned 18 in the 1960s and she doesn't remember Stonewall. To be fair, she can't have known that I'd be her kid, that the bricks launched a police would compel me to exist, which is again, she's like, after Stonewall, you kind of expect more people to come out, but like, it slips a lot of people's minds. <laughs> I think that also just brings up like heteronormativity is like so strong in society that mm-hmm. like it's it's being cis and straight is seen as normal and mm-hmm. the norm so like you gotta break that away mm-hmm. and overall like uh, grace mentions this in the interview later but like but they said that they are a faith faithfully skeptical christian which is what i feel like is the vibe for this song um there's also a big reminder in the song that where grace reminds himself that he's worth it and just kind of like, I spent the rest of the night freaking out. I had to get high just to put myself down. But I woke up for you and I cut my hair because I'm worth it. But yeah, this is a big, big reminder. Yeah. And I like, I really do like the um, the quote, like, faithfully skeptical, skeptical Christian. Because it mm-hmm. urges, especially like queer youth, to really examine what they're being told. Um, especially from like rampant homophobia Christians. And really, really examine what you're being told and if that, like, actually aligns with, like, the Bible or whatever you're studying or whatever, um, or your lifestyle and just make your decisions from Mm -hmm. there. Like, don't feel obligated to have, just because, like, your parents are Christian or whatever, it'd be forcing yourself to be Christian. (laughs) But also mentioning the queer youth, right? Youth group. If you are gay and raised in a Christian family, you know what youth group is. Um, I don't. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I mean, like, I uh, do logically, but I've never been to a Christian youth group in my life. <laughs> I used to get bullied at mine. Like, did you guys sense that I was gay? Like, what was happening there? Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, the literal line I have scripted out, if any of you have ever been to a youth group, I think you know where this one is going. The whole song kind of outlines, like, the weird space youth group is because – it's like let me just read it out youth group lock-ins are really strange concepts youth group leaders seem to really like it it's like let's take some repressed hormonal teenagers and put them in a church and hopefully they'll find jesus overnight like jesus jesus is a ghost hiding in the church and if you stay just long enough you'll find him but in my experience the only thing you'll find is your sexuality (laughs) those are some strong lyrics (laughs) yeah (laughs) how many kids like went to like a youth camp and just like my youth camp was also in a basement like what do you think is going to happen? Gay people, <laughs> we're going to happen. Excuse me. Uh, you see, I did not grow up in the Midwest. I grew up in New York City. Um, so I have no, a mid- Midwest church experience. Like even because I grew up very in white middle village Queens, the churches were also extremely white. Mm-hmm. And because I was a brown person, I was the minority there. And that was very uncomfortable always. Mm-hmm. Uh, but later in the song Youth Group, it like mentions how like church camps and their effect, like the effect they have on queer kids uh, with the line, you're not what they say, what they said about you as a subtext of, I want to say like religious anti-LGBTQ LGBTQ brainwashing, which comes with a lot of nasty ideas about sin and like gay people and like all that. But coincidentally, a lot of gay people find out that they're queer at church camps. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you're nodding, right? Like a lot of people find out that they're gay or queer at church camps because like, yeah. um, oh, you have like a, like a church camp leader and like you like there's like a story on tiktok somewhere where this girl had given um her youth leader leader a flower and they sent her home for 
being gay or being gay, right? I was like, it was like an eight-year-old giving like a lady of flowers. She wasn't gay. She was, but it wasn't gay in this moment. (laughs) (laughs) I hate hate that. Yeah, but I want to say like a lot of these parents sense that their kids are queer, so they send them to church camps to kind of like get it out of them. But you're putting them with a lot of people whose parents also thought that about them and have sent them to church camps. So it's a bunch of repressed queer kids. I have a story of a, a friend who's a cis lesbian and she her when her parents found out that she was lesbian because she had a secret girlfriend, they sent her to an all girls Christian school. Where's and the I'm logic? like and no, an all girls Christian boarding school. So like <laughs> It's it's probably because like it's probably because like um they don't want you to be gay, but also they don't want you to have a boyfriend because you're going to have sex with them before you're married, and that's a sin. Something like that. I'm going to assume it's something like that so they won't send them to, like, um, a mixed-sex school or anything like that. That's that's my... <laughs> that's my. I don't, I don't think... I really just don't think parents who do that type of stuff are thinking very far in no, there. No, they got no brains. <laughs> they probably think, oh, you're surrounded by the same sex. You're definitely going to be hetero. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these church camps, right? They try and force the gay out of a lot of kids, right? Um, at least a lot of kids afraid of like eternal damnation. They're, like they just find out, or like it's like heavily instilled in them in this one moment where the God that is all knowing, all loving, and all that actually hates their guts enough to punish them forever after they die, um, and possibly while they're alive, right? Um, which is like mirrored in the line. Now I'm all grown up and I'm effed up. Is there still a God I can trust? If you're out there, I'm waiting. If you're out there, I'm praying. Um, which is like almost like desperate because it's like this one entity we're supposed to have all this trust in suddenly hates you and you're like have to refine God again. Um, which a lot of people do don't ever get to like they don't ever like try to re-explore what it means to have God in their life again. At least from my experience. <laughs> All right, so we're on Late Bloomer now. So this is the new EP that came out just just last year. Oh, my God, I forgot it was 2022. Yeah, oh my 2022. God. Yeah, just last year, 2021. I Happy forgot it was 2022. Again. I was like, wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Existential crisis time. This is also about like 20 minutes in listening time because it's an EP. Mm-hmm. So we have Psalm 102, Prodigal, Prodigal Girl, uh, I'd Rather Be a Ghost, Want to Grab a Coffee, Late Bloomer, and Hallelujah in Your Arms. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing, we're looking into I'd Rather Be a Ghost and Late Bloomer. Late Bloomer because specifically I wanted to go into the topic that song kind of like captures. If you can tell, I wrote this one and I had a lot to say. <laughs> Late bloomer, right? You probably guess what that in- implies. Uh, I want you guys to take a guess. Like, pause for a moment. Pause it here. Take a guess about why a lot of queer people are considered to be late bloomers or feel like them themselves are late bloomers. And why so many people, like the lesbian stereotype is start dating, get married, move in, like, within, like, a year, right? Um, it's almost like playing a game of catch-up that we don't actually have to play. But a lot of people have had their childhood stripped away from them because of this queerness, especially if you were forced to go to church camp. That's, like, year, like months of years out of, like, your childhood and teenage years, right? Which is, like, denying people aspects of themselves. So, like, on top of being denied, ac- like, access to themselves, uh, a lot of people have had a relive their entire childhood in their 20s. I'm currently in my 20s now. <laughs> So that's what I've been doing. It just feels like a lot more trouble than it's worth. So we're like considered late bloomers because we're literally just playing catch up and having to relive all of those years all over again. Yeah. If you weren't aware. <laughs> a lot of a lot of queer people, especially in the like twenties, thirties, grow up having no idea how to do like things that you wouldn't even think about if you were like cis and sh- like straight. Like for example, like asking out someone in your school to like a dance or like passing notes in lockers and like just like general things that you'll see in like romance and all of the movies and stuff like that you like these queer kids are growing up into queer adults not having any experience with like how do you find a boyfriend if you're a gay male or how do you find a girlfriend Mm -hmm. if you're a gay girl um which is why i think so many like queer teens especially gay men teens flock to older gay men because it's like ah that's a gay man i can see him but they don't know they don't know how to talk to their own peers like i could talk about that quite a (laughs) lot that's that's a whole other topic there's a there's a whole rant that i talk about every time about how 
there's so many underaged gay youth on like Grinder and stuff because there's just cis straight men in mm-hmm. their schools, and then they get taken advantage of, and then it's just, mm-hmm. it's a I, it's a whole rant I go on like I, at least once a week. Yeah, I just want to <laughs> say like it's it's a common practice, like it's a common thing that you're gonna see if you look at gay teens, which is probably why a lot of gayness is sexualized because like all these kids are like going out with these older men who of course are like just looking for sex a lot of the time right from younger folks but like it's like there was a kid in my school who was like six not even 16 he was like 15 going out with like an 18 19 year old someone who's like my age possibly even 21 right i uh i knew a kid in high school who got in a lot of trouble because he had created a fake id at 15 saying that he was 18 to go on grinder and there's a whole a whole mess wrapped up into that but the and mm-hmm. it was literally because he had no no kids around him in his school mm-hmm. um yeah i was the first queer kid to come out of my school ever right and then afterwards like people slowly started coming out but that was like 2 years after i came out and moved out of the town like it, my my presence was still there because i was the only one who would come out which is one monumental to do <laughs> but two I was completely alone and I had to leave. And then I left all these queer kids alone, which like weighs heavy on me or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in Late Bloomer and in I'd Rather Be a Ghost, I'd Rather Be a Ghost just also expresses like, it mirrors the queer experience and even just like the really depressed experience of just not wanting to be here. Not so much that you want to die or be dead. It's just like you'd rather just gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To have never existed, to have never existed in the future, just to have none of the pain that comes with leaving. Also, kind of like just kind of being able to drift through life without too much weighing on you. Yeah. Like that, uh, that's good. What the? F- <laughs> have you? I, I'm, Everyone who grew up with uh, sleeping with sirens and uh, pierce the veil, king for a day, um, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I listen to them. I'm not paying attention. I'm probably not actually. You're fake emo. <laughs> oh. Fake well, scene kid. I'll take my horse mane and get out then. <laughs> horse mane. Yeah, look at my new haircut. Anyway, I'm a horse you boy. You still look like Prince Charming from Shrek. If you guys look at my TikTok, you will find the video where I'm sadly standing in front of Prince Charming <laughs> with my hair. But anyway, back on topic. So anyway, I'd rather be ghost. Um it's again like that feeling of like you're not home in your body um yeah you're not like you which is the way that the best way that i can always describe it is like looking into the mirror and then looking like you're watching yourself on a tv screen like Mm. it's just kind of like what's happening like who are Mm. you what's going on um I know in late bloomer there is that lyric is like oh I wonder what it must be like to grow up always knowing your face it took years to recognize myself but it was well worth the wait I've also struggled with this but also that could just be mental illness but like obviously it's mirror <laughs> I mean that doesn't have to be mutually exclusive I know <laughs> there's religious know. trauma and then you know mental illness from the religious it's mental trauma illness. and there's also just inherent trauma from growing up in a cishet society if yeah. you're queer I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I am beginning my my trauma journey of recognizing myself because I look at myself in the mirror all the time. I'm just like, you're also I know an that's actor. me. You're also an actor, so you're always on screen. I can't watch my acting. <laughs> <laughs> I watch my acting, and not only is it a trip for me because I don't recognize myself, but because I'm playing someone else, then it's just a further layer in that. That's so I'm fair. just like, everyone else can watch this and tell me I did good. I don't care if I did bad. Tell me I did good. <laughs> but yeah i think i'll leave it with like the last line that i have like picked out from i'd rather be a ghost um like obviously with a theme of not feeling like you're home in your body which i said like i resonated with obviously but um it ties into late bloomer when it mentions not wrecking yourself in them recognizing yourself in the mirror um and the line is let me be your ghost dear i'd haunt you so nice what a heavenly way to spend an afterlife i'm not at home here honey in reference to like let me be your ghost let me detach from my body um which is obviously like it was mirrored in late bloomer which i am assuming a lot of late bloomers feel <laughs> yes <laughs> um anyway we are uh, running out of time uh well, i yeah. could go on for literally hours there's so much music that i didn't touch on i have literally just like literally just stream all of samler's music like just also go see them on tour uh 
it's on their website. I'll post like a list of his things. <laughs> tour dates. Tour, tour dates. Tour dates. Yeah. <laughs> but um, anyway, let me let me sit back up for the. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> let's cut to the interview of Grace. Yes. <laughs> So here we are with the interview. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah. Uh, this is Grace. Hi. Uh, thanks um, for meeting with us. Thank you for having me. So good having people interview again. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. Um, I wanted to open up with your um, your opening for Reliant K. Yeah. That's yes. exciting. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I thought I was being pranked for a while. <laughs> I thought it was like this weird, elaborate prank over email. Mm -hmm. And because I they sort of floated it and then mm -hmm. it took a while for the actual announcement because that's just how things work. And so for a while I was like, that was a fever dream. That didn't happen. They didn't email me and ask me that. That was a weird prank. Mm -hmm. But it is real and I'm very excited for tour. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh You're on God. tour. I looked on your website. You're on tour with them for a while, like mm -hmm. a few months. Yeah. I'm on their bus, too. Yeah. That's, that's They agreed not. to it. They'd be weird if they <laughs> took it back now. So I'm going to be living with Reliant K. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh it's so God. fun. We're going to get real familiar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you manifested this in the seventh grade. A little bit. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking in the seventh grade. Boy, my seventh grade journals, my mom keeps everything. And so I was recently looking through them. You can tell I'm a preacher's kid because it's all like demons and names of CCM bands, like just drawings oh, no. of straight up demons mm -hmm. from my mind's eye as a seventh grader, which we should revisit um and then just names of like christian bands like switchfoot like, <laughs> rely just writing out some of their song lyrics and the, the, oh my the, god the duo of a coin flip right mm -hmm. um and since you're opening this year pretty big as in, like oh, literally opening for Ryan, Ryan k um did you have any goals for 2022 going into it before that happened and then have they changed because you started this year off way like really strong yes it's definitely been hitting the ground running for the new year. Mm -hmm. My goal, it's kind of the same since it was in 2021. I want to record a full length album. I've only released EPs thus far and, and I love doing that. And I like being able to release music frequently. You can definitely expect new music from me within the next six months. But mm -hmm. at some point in time, I would like to release a full length album that is worthy of a CCM Grammy. That's mm -hmm. been, that's gonna be my goal for a while. I think that's an important uh, door that I'm interested in knocking on and also going on tour and uh, some of that is starting to, to happen but I think a, a headline tour sometime would be amazing and I would love to to try that out mm -hmm. cool I dig it I'm super excited for that <laughs> <laughs> yes oh my god um so in Jesus from Texas you mentioned your mom in the opening about how she didn't remember Stonewall even though she was 18 when it happened mm -hmm. but on your Instagram recently there's a post about the gay flag in your parents home does that mean that they came around after a while or like what's the stuff on that yeah um y'all have really done your research <laughs> 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 uh, um <laughs> Well, so <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing drugs, but like for me, it was like um, there's some people who are estranged from their kids. So I'm like, totally. that makes me really happy to see that like the flag in your parents' house, right? So yes, like, yeah, and they live in in Kentucky too, mm -hmm. um, okay. which is a state that uh, has has not always been so great for queer people. And I think it's important that there's visibility um, and representation and and kindness extended to the queer community in Kentucky. And maybe my parents' flag is doing that. I'm really fortunate that um, my parents didn't fully know me for a long time. They were like the last people I came out to pretty much mm -hmm. because I didn't know how it was going to be. And I think that's unfortunate. And I always try and advise parents and guardians that you need to be real clear and specific with the, the young people that you are looking after so that there is no doubt that they can be themselves with you and that they can come with you to with questions. Ultimately, when I did come out to my parents, they were really accepting and curious to learn about the part of me that has been hidden from them. They remain that way. We talk about everything. It's like a sort of like a veil was just lifted and we were able to fully understand, communicate with each other. They're so supportive. They're very proud of me. And I did not ask them to put up a pride flag <laughs> for their home in Kentucky, but it was the first time that my wife had visited um, where they live. And I think that was like a welcoming gesture for them and really meaningful for me because we have had a lot of conversations to get to where we are. And mm -hmm. it's nice to almost see a physical representation of that. 
on their front porch. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm super happy to hear them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said it earlier. But They're great. Really I want them to come to a show on tour um, and just have like <laughs> – Semler's mom and dad and just because they're they are they really have done the work and they've just mm. been great and they're very kind and I know that that's not the case for so many people mm. and just to to have that present at a show I think could be cool obviously with COVID it's you know right I'm not being like hug my old parents um <laughs> but <laughs> because they are old um but maybe in the future that could be something that maybe they're like behind the merch booth or something because they're they're great yes it's a meet and greet a little meet and greet with my parents like <laughs> oh, who cares yeah. about me like meet sweet Isabel <laughs> mm. I would love to meet your parents <laughs> they would love to meet you yes. oh my they're really sweet I really I'm very proud of them <laughs> Um, I was gonna. We already asked this question earlier. You started on tour, right? Have you been on tour before? I know you used to, like you're living on them with a bus, but like mm-hmm. you've been on tour before, right? Not like this. Yeah, not like this. Though. Uh, yeah, really not like this. I've done um, a handful of shows opening up for Katie Pruitt in November, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but music didn't become like my full time job until 2021. Mm-hmm. I'd always been kind of doing odd jobs, and I'm and I'm still really interested in a lot of the multi hyphenate things that I've been doing right. but as far as tour that was like a, kind of a distant dream so this will be my first proper tour experience that's so exciting yes. yeah it's weird God. it's so exciting <laughs> I just I keep thinking about like relying K hey, like my my inner like raised Catholic self <laughs> is like <Yeah>. screaming <laughs> I know they were like that band it's kind of hard to explain to people outside of what many of us sort of experienced that they were like one of the safe bands and you almost didn't know why because they never really talked about it Mm -hmm. they were one of those like few bands that just i always like really wished that they didn't hate me um yeah and they don't they want me to live with them (laughs) (laughs) so it's been great uh and i was gonna ask your takeover of the country music charts well christian music charts Oh, I don't know why it says country here. Oh, I mean, hey, Christian. maybe ne- next on my list. Tackle them. Yeah, Manifest. tackle them. <laughs> Got to do it. Yeah, but you're take over the Christian music charts. I know you've talked about, talked about it before, but how are you feeling about breaking into those charts in the first place? Because I know it's been like a hostile environment for like... Yeah, <laughs> um, it was never expected. I always thought that... I just wanted to be honest about the music I was writing from thematically. It's right now I really am wrestling through some religious trauma and my own reckonings with faith and doubt. And so that lives in the faith or inspirational category, depending on the Mm -hmm. country, it's categorized a little bit differently. And I want to be honest in how that's categorized and who I am shouldn't negate me from participating. So I just was hoping that people who needed to hear my music or could relate to it would be able to find it. And through the success of both projects, I feel very fortunate that that has been the case and we're able to just find more people. I'm not trying to be for everyone. I'm not trying to say that this is the music that that your choir should be singing in church. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that, like, if Reliant K is a Christian band, then Semler is also can be considered a Christian artist, especially during this era that I'm writing from. Mm -hmm. There is some explicit material that I discuss and words that I use but I'm a colorful person who uses colorful language to describe my experience and I think that there is divinity in the profound and the profane and Mm -hmm. we can agree to disagree on that it's kind of a weird thing that there's one chart where you're like these are the no-no words Mm -hmm. you're an artist so please express yourself fully but not these no-no words (laughs) they're not in the bible we can't prove it but just don't say the f word it's like (laughs) According to who? God said. God was like, no f words, no. I don't even care how you use it. Yeah, radio censorship. You had to like re-record all those. Oh my god, yeah. And then be like in like a conjunction with like you breaking into the Christian music charts, um, with Little Nas doing the whole thing where he like really like. I think that's probably why it's on the multiple question below. Like he like. I'm flattered (laughs) that you (laughs) would confuse (laughs) me with Little Nas (laughs) with like a mega star like that for sure. Oh my god, yeah. Well, it was like. It was like um, our he, duets project coming soon. Do it, yes, yeah. collab with Little Nas. Yes. Like um, collab right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but the way he broke into the country music charts and they had to like recategorize it because it wasn't country enough, right? Do you feel like it's easier for queer and LGBT artists to get in after he kind of like fought for that? Because I've noticed a trend of that picking up. 
I hope so. I think all you can hope is to create an easier path for either the younger version of you mm. or for young people coming up behind you. Um, if I've been able to help that at all within Christian music, um, if I have served as an invitation for other people to share their stories and their experiences, then I'm incredibly honored to have played that small role. And I, ju I just hope that we see a, a pluralism of expression when it comes to faith. How have we got it so there's this monolith in this genre of just mm -hmm. one way of worshiping God, the Almighty? There's one way that we're talking to the guy? Are you, are you kidding me? Yeah. We've, I think that that is worthy of reproach and worthy of being challenged. And so I, I hope I'm one of many. Mm -hmm. There's definitely the movement for a lot of a lot, lot more churches becoming like a sec, a, a, oh my god, <laughs> becoming accepting of yeah. LGBT folks, right? In conjunction with like you busting into the Christian music charts, I really feel like this is like a hopeful step forward. And I'm like, you're like tackling the genre head on, which is like really nice to see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It was it was really interesting because the way that I found your TikTok was because when preacher kid preacher's kid was mm -hmm. going viral because you know like the whole breaking into the Christian charts and everything like that. Um, and the TikTok comments were either very supportive or very on the other end of that spectrum being like, why are you taking over this genre? Yeah. This isn't for you. Um, so I really do appreciate and am like kind of almost admiring you for like really being that pioneer into stepping foot into a place where normally you don't see queer music and queer artists. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just because I'm a queer person, does that mean that I don't have a relationship to God and meaning mm -hmm. beyond this life? I don't think so. Mm. And I think that that's ridiculous. And I also think that, and this is kind of not something I super want to get into, but it's also not biblically sound. Um, and I think that we're learning more and more about affirming theology. So if any of your listeners are curious about like how I reconcile who I am and my Christian upbringing, I would encourage them to look up affirming theology because there's so many scholars that have been just breaking down barriers and just building a larger table to include more people and so there is this regressive theology that you've probably heard I, i've heard these verses as well and i just would encourage a listener who feels discouraged in that that there is other interpretations and to go seek them out because they're there for you absolutely thank yeah. you so much for that <laughs> yes <laughs> i know it's hard uh to come back into religion as a queer person after being thrown out of it so like I'll put like the I'll put the, like, the links and stuff I find up right now so people can have like a head start to find that stuff because that's super important to me getting back into my own spiritual practices so like <laughs> literally thank you so much. <laughs> I mean um oh my god I had a question and it flew out of my brain that wasn't written down. It had something to do with religious trauma but I don't remember like it wasn't specifically like oh what's your religious <laughs> trauma <laughs> would you mind sharing <laughs> could you make Fair. an annotated list <laughs> <laughs> which Fair. verses hurt the most <laughs> <laughs> I probably could do it. That's what's weird. That's what happens when you grow up the way we did. Oh, oh my yeah. God, yeah. I could talk about my religious trauma for days. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, obviously, would you have any platforms you would like to direct listeners to specifically? Mm -hmm. Other than, like, your Instagram, Twitter, YouTube that we have. Oh, well, YouTube is boring. I don't do anything there. Um, <laughs> but sure, direct them to, to see it's a dead zone. Um, you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Grace Baldridge, which mm -hmm. is my real name um similar is my artist name and that's where you can find me on tiktok mm -hmm. and uh i know that reliant k is not coming to the west coast on this leg of the tour but if you're interested in seeing me live i would just say stay tuned because there there could be some west coast stuff happening so i'd love to see you at a show soon cool. absolutely yeah thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much for coming and visiting with us so good seeing you. Thank you. Yeah. So good seeing you as well. Did you read that from your paper? No, no, oh. no. <laughs> I thought you looked down. I thought you were like, thank you, Maria. And then you were like, so good to see you. Thank no, no, I was so checking much. to make sure we had all like the, the, the stuff, but we got Amazing. it. <laughs> I thought you double checked. Um, all right. So am I? Am yeah, I yeah, you're good. Awesome. All right, yes. Well, bye, guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this episode where we get to interview Semler, a.k.a. Grace Baldridge. And you, as always, you can follow us on Instagram at, at into underscore the studio and on Twitter into the studio or YouTube where we now have the username of uh, into the studio 323. Custom URL. Our yeah. username on there is into the studio. God, this is a. 
this is a time to search up on YouTube. Yeah, you just you type can it find into us now. You can actually find us now. We reached 100 subscribers recently, which is also super cool. You guys should Thank follow you us. Thank you for the we subscribers. You. Absolutely. Okay. Bye. Bye.